An update as a Gaza refugee camp gets hit by an airstrike. We will take a trip to the New Look Art Building on campus. And hundreds gather in Los Angeles, California to commemorate their loved ones. All this and more coming up on OC News. This just in yeah. with Tech News, the first responder on the police. There's been a lot of collaborative efforts. I feel blessed to be here in Fullerton. Brought to you by the Broadcast, Broadcast Journalism Student at Cal State Fullerton. Thank you, Sandy. Miles, because it happened. OC News starts right now. Welcome to OC News. I'm Marissa Lavazari. And I'm Nathan Glendenny. Thanks for joining us this evening. Governor Gavin Newsom announced a new effort to hold drug traffickers accountable by establishing a new Joint Law Enforcement Task Force. The fatalities connected to fentanyl have been on the rise with an average of two people dying to drug overdoses in the city every year, or every day. The new task force will employ produ producers to document deaths, gather evidence, and process intelligence to find the supply of fentanyl and other opioids in the market. Governor Newsom said that the opioid crisis has claimed too many lives and the task force will be fighting for the victims and families affected by this crisis. A deadly Israeli strike shook Gaza's largest refugee camp in northern Gaza that killed and wounded many. The strike that hit Gaza's refugee camp killed a large number of people and left major damage. Hospitals have seen a sharp increase in patients, leaving healthcare workers stretched thin. Dozens of trucks carrying humanitarian aid entered the Gaza Strip on Tuesday. The shipments include water, food, and medical equipment. The Israel Defense Forces claimed the strike killed a Hamas commander who was one of the leaders of the October 7th terror attack in Israel. The Hamas has strongly denied the presence of one of its leaders in the refugee camp. U.S. Congress is debating aid to both Israel and Ukraine amidst the conflict in both regions. In the Senate, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has backed the Biden administration $106 billion aid proposal to both Israel and Ukraine. Biden's proposal would allocate $14 billion to Israel and $60 billion to Ukraine, with the rest allocated to other issues including the U.S.-Mexico border and general humanitarian relief. In the House, New Speaker Mike Johnson is reportedly looking to push for a $14.5 billion package for Israel when the House reconvenes next week. The Treasury announced Monday that it seeks to borrow $776 billion during the last three months of the year. This announcement comes 10 days after the government said the fiscal 2023 budget deficit would be about $1.7 trillion. Investors are now focused on how the federal government will manage the flow of Treasury securities. Wall Street expected the Treasury to borrow more than $776 billion. Stocks have lost some of their gains, but still remain positive after the announcement. The markets have been concerned about how the higher yields towards the Treasury Department would be affected. A memorial for the victims of the shooting last week in Lewiston, Maine has grown over the past few days. Mourners are placing pumpkins with names and tributes to the victims of the October 25th mass shooting, which took the lives of 18 people. The memorial is placed outside of the Just-In-Time Recreation Bowling Alley, one of the two sites where the shooting took place. Investigators said that seven people lost their lives in the bowling alley, with eight others passing away at a nearby bar and grill. Three others died after being hospitalized, while 13 others were injured. The town of Lewiston has constructed many other memorials to continue remembering those affected by this tragedy. They were generous, they were kind, they bring a smile, you know, and they were trying so hard to be, you know, just part of the community and, and, and doing what they loved. They loved everybody, you know, um, and it's just, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, and I'm, I'm surprised I'm not tearing up right now. I am, but I'm not crying. I, it's been, it's been really tough. Coming up after a short break, we take a sneak peek at the new design of the art building. And later, we celebrate Dia de los Muertos in Los Angeles. We'll also take a current look at the weather with Marcus Ovea. I got today's temperatures and a update on Hurricane Otis after this.
prepared as your family if a wildfire shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or an earthquake? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back. If you're walking around campus, you'll notice that a visual art building is under construction. Our reporter Olivia Morales has an update on the new look of the art buildings. Thank you, anchors. As you can see behind me, there's an example of visual art that's being shown on campus. But the College of Arts for Cal State Fullerton has bigger plans to showcase more examples like this. A brand new visual arts building is currently in the works to give students a chance to show off their art. Many art students are excited for the upcoming new addition, including Henry Earhart. Yeah, I did. I've, um, I'm like, I'm, I guess I'm excited for it. <laughs> Another theater arts student, Madison Williams, shares how the new building will be a great space to showcase different kinds of artwork from students. I have heard about the visual arts building that's coming up. It is a definitely a great addition for the art majors because again, the building that we have right now isn't the greatest. So as it's being built, it's gonna be definitely a big um, thing for the art majors. There is also currently an exhibit showing images for the new visual arts building and what it would look like. The exhibit is at College Park 302 and visiting hours are subject to change and are by appointment only through March 22nd, 2024. The new Visual Arts Building is currently under construction and will hopefully be open by next year. This is Olivia Morales, signing off. Are you getting the mid-semester blues? ASI is hosting art workshops in the TSU throughout November. Conlon McKenzie has the latest. Today we're here at ASI's drop-in artwork studio, birdhouses and cactus rocks. If you're stressed out about school or anything else, this might be for you. Come on in and check it out. Students are invited to come create different art pieces such as birdhouses and cactus rocks. This week was the perfect way for students to find time to relax amongst their busy schedules with their peers. This, is, this was my first time. Like I like to paint, but I wasn't aware of this. So like this was my first time. I'll come then. I'll come like now whenever there's an art workshop. ASI hosts these workshops every week in the TSU. This week's art was nature, and next week will be Sanrio week. All workshop materials and supplies are provided. Students are encouraged to get creative, and you can even take home your creations once you are done. If you're interested in any of the November workshops, come check out the ASI schedule located at the TSU right next to the Grand Stair Studio. I'm Conlon McKenzie with OC News. California has seen some more cold nights and hot days, but luckily we have Marcus Olvea in the studio to talk about the weather. Take it away, Marcus. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. We are currently in the middle of autumn and we are exactly 22 days away from my favorite holiday in November. It's Thanksgiving. It is on Thursday this year and let's go over weather conditions for today in Fullerton. It's going to be 87 degrees. It's partly cloudy with a calm flow. Winds are at a low seven miles per hour today. Humidity is at 11%. Today's sunrise will be at 7, 12 in the morning and sunset will be at 5:59. Next, let's go over the Fullerton five day forecast. Thursday and Friday are similar in the highs of 80 and the lows will be in the 50s with sunny skies. Saturday will have temperatures in the 80s with lows in the 50s with partly cloudy day. A high cloud cover that might block out the sunshine. Between Saturday and Sunday, do not forget to turn those clocks one hour. 
Fullerton weather will stay cooler, allowing the flow into the valleys. From Sunday to Monday, the temperatures will stay in the 70s and lows in the 50s. If these cold temperatures continue into the end of the year, we'll be skiing hopefully at the end of this month. And back and down south to our neighbors in Mexico, a Category 5 hurricane named Otis destroyed the city of Acapulco, the strongest hurricane on record to strike the west coast of Mexico. Otis, powerful winds that reached up to 205 miles per hour, that's the highest ever recorded, and, and it damaged many buildings and leaving many people stranded. Flooding and landslides re resulted from the overflow of rain, and the government sent thousands of military to aid survivors in recovery efforts. The hurricane recovery cost has reached $15 billion in damages, and the current is 48 dead and 36 missing. That's all I have for you today. Thank you, and back to you in the studio. Thank you, Marcus. The Career Center at Cal State Fullerton is a gold mine for students as they transition into the workforce. Our reporter, Jose Flores, has more. A plethora of resources await students in the Career Center, and specialists offer a wide array of services. Resume review, cover letter, interview preparation, job and internship search, or even career exploration, just to name some of them. Throughout the semester, career fairs are hosted by the center, allowing students to network and gain field insights. They even offer a pre-event walkthrough to help ease jitters. We even have prepare for the fair workshops that take place before the fairs, so that students kind of have an idea of what to expect, but beyond an actual workshop or info session, now we can have them physically go into the space and see what it's like. And if you don't have any professional attire, don't worry. Tuffy's Career Closet has you covered. That is a campus partnership that we have. It's between Tuffy's Basic Needs Center and the Career Center. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from the Career Center is Tuffy's Basic Needs Center, where you can find the Career Closet. To access the Career Closet, students just need to come into our center when we're open, which is Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. They just check in with our front desk staff with either their Titan Cloud or their Seawood and indicate they want access to Tuffy's Career Closet. They can get up to six items of professional attire per month to keep. Now, the closet is donation-based. So donations are always encouraged. And they also set up racks outside of internship and career expos for students that want to look professional before talking to potential employers. In today's competitive job market, standing out is paramount. And the Career Center equips students with the skills and confidence they need to do just that. Its impact is felt far beyond graduation day as it becomes a springboard to a thriving career. It's never too early to come in, right? Start as soon as you can and take advantage. Visit the Career Center at Langsdorf Hall today. For OC News, I'm Jose Flores. After another short break, we take you inside the Dia de los Muertos celebration in Los Angeles. And reveal the latest athlete to join the Billionaires Club. And more in the sports world with Miguel Castaneda. And there's some coaches getting fired too. It's coming up after the break. Many gather in Los Angeles in celebration of Dia de los Muertos. Francisco Molina has the latest. We're here in Alvera Street where they are celebrating Dia de los Muertos, where many are coming to commemorate their lost and loved ones and embracing their Hispanic culture. But don't just take my word for it, check it out. Uh, since we're in a very Hispanic area, uh, we bring the tradition, the culture of Dia de los Muertos, the altar and what it means, what it signifies. So we brought the kids over here to see the whole altars and the whole 
uh, reason why we do curriculum is to continue traditions in our in our own within our own community. Our kids are visual learners, so having them to see what what's being created even in a brighter spectrum is even better for them. I think it's very beautiful. My family like decorates this like every single November to really honor like our loved ones that like sadly passed away. I think it's very beautiful and very creative of our culture. It's been really lively. Um, I think it's a beautiful celebration um, for anyone that is Hispanic or it comes from Hispanic um, heritage and I think it's really um, exciting and a nice celebration for everyone to come together and um, celebrate their ancestors and loved ones. For those interested, they will be hosting events tonight and tomorrow, both at 7 p.m. Well, that's it from here at Olvera Street. I'm Francisco Molina. It's time to enjoy some churros. I send it back to you guys at the studio. It was a busy week in sports with the World Series taking place, the NFL trade deadline coming to a close, and the Titans playoffs kicking off. For more, we go to our sports anchor, Miguel Casaneda. Thank you, Nathan. We have plenty of sports to talk about today from outside of Cal State Fullerton and within. Let's get into it. Despite the NFL trade deadline coming to a close at 4 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, the Las Vegas Raiders made a drastic move outside the roster by firing their head coach, Josh McDaniels, and general manager, Dave Ziegler. This comes after a 3-5 start to the season and tough loss to the Lions on Monday Night Football. Along with these moves, the Raiders have also decided to fire their offensive coordinator, Mick Lombardi, now, Las Vegas has promoted their linebackers coach, Antonio Pierce, to interim head coach and Champ Kelly as their interim general manager. Tonight, the Texas Rangers have a chance to clinch the World Series championship in Arizona as they lead the series 3-1 after an impressive win yesterday against the Diamondbacks. With scores from Corey Seager, Marcus Simeon, and other Rangers, Texas went up 10-1 before the beginning of the eighth inning, and despite a valiant effort from Arizona that saw them score six runs in the final two innings of the game, Texas was able to maintain the lead and get one step closer to glory. Once again, the Rangers are playing without Max Scherzer and Adoles Garcia. Let's see if that plays a factor tonight. And as the MLB playoffs are coming to a close, the Titans men's and women's soccer playoffs are just getting started. Both teams clinched the number one overall seed in the Big West Conference. The women's squad starts their journey tomorrow here at 7.30 when they face off against the number five ranked UC Irvine. Meanwhile, the men's await the winner between number four UC Davis and number five Cal Poly Slow. That game will also take place here on Saturday at 7 p.m. But let's keep with that bas basketball theme. Uh, Lakers legend and NBA Hall of Famer Magic Johnson is officially a billionaire now. Johnson, who played 13 years in the NBA, joins Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, and fellow Laker LeBron James as just the fourth athlete to become a billionaire. His past investments include a partial share in the Lakers, 100 Starbucks locations, and a movie theater chain. However, he sold all of them off by 2010. He earned most of his wealth from his majority ownership share in Equitrust Insurance, which he took control of around a decade ago. Halloween is in the rear view mirror, and many people have already set their sights on Thanksgiving. According to Wells Fargo's Thanksgiving food report, the wholesale price of 10 to 15 pound turkeys has fallen by almost 30% since last year, resulting in 13% drop in stores nationwide. This comes as a result of farmers raising more turkeys to meet the ever rising demand and refrigerated trucking becomes even more affordable. The price of turkeys also tends to fall even more later in November when the supply really hits the shelves. But it might not be too early to pre-order the star of your Thanksgiving dinner. With Halloween season wrapping up and the Christmas season coming around the corner, the world of entertainment might be hitting its high. For more, we go to our entertainment anchor, Kazra Nosrati. We got a lot going on in the entertainment world. We got engagements, we got big time deals, and we got celebrities going all out for Halloween. Let's dive into it. Batman's not gonna like hearing this in Gotham, but Zoe Kravitz and Channing Tatum are now engaged. The couple have been dating for two years. They were leaving a Halloween party this past weekend where Zoe was showing off the new ring. The duo first met each other when Tatum was on the casting process of Kravitz's upcoming film. It was during this film process where Kravitz felt that Tatum became her guardian on set. 
as one relationship continues to develop, another one has just begun. Kim Kardashian landed a deal with the NBA, WNBA, and U.S. men's basketball team to become the official underwear partner. Her company Skims recently just dropped its first collection for men with Oklahoma City Thunder guard Shea Gilgis Alexander being one of the models for it. Within the deal, Skims will receive extra media spotlight on the league platforms across all digital media platforms as well. And while we're on the subject of NBA, LeBron James went all out for Halloween. The King has been notorious for delivering on the 31st in the past, and this year it wasn't any different. LeBron and Savannah James dressed up as characters from the movie Beetlejuice. The King went as Beetlejuice, while Savannah went as Miss Argentina. Off night for the Lakers, but man, LG LBJ continues to deliver with the Halloween costumes. That's it from the entertainment end. Back to you, Marissa. A new California police officer who couldn't make it to his recruit class's graduation because of the birth of his second child received a one-on-one -on -one swearing in ceremony. Officer Trent Kersey missed his ceremony on Tuesday because he felt a strong duty to be with his wife for the birth of his son. The police department showed determination when it came to making sure that Kersey was honored from graduation for graduating the academy. The private swearing in ceremony was the department's way of showing Kersey and other officers that they understood the idea of work-life balance. The department said hi to the family and met little Theo who had just joined the world before his dad got sworn in. Thank you for joining us tonight for OC News. Our next telecast comes to you next Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube page at Titan TV. From all of us here at OC News, have a lovely evening.